Hello and welcome back. We are live right here in our SANS booth at RSA Conference 2023. If you're at the conference, we invite you to come over to booth 4416. Come hang out with us. Uh, I am so very excited to be having a conversation with Dr. Johannes Ulrich, somebody I have tremendous respect for. He's a SANS fellow, uh, 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 Dean of Research for SANS Technology Institute College. Welcome to our live stream today. Thanks, Stephen, for having me here. And uh, amazing here at a big conference, really, really busy. I've seen some great sessions already that were pretty much packed. So uh, hope our keynote tomorrow will also be equally packed. Kind of. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so listen, I, I was talking with Ed Skodas last night, and he was mentioning how long you've been part of that keynote. Yeah, I actually forgot when it all started, kind of. <laughs> <sort of wrong. laughs> so, you know, you're, you're here at RSA. Um, last year, uh, we were just getting back post-COVID. Um, you know, and this year it feels like it's twice the size of the audience. Are you feeling that energy? Yes, it's definitely much more energy because the, last year was still people being cautious. And, yeah. Not really sure about what to expect. I think no, now it's back sort of to the way it used to be, really big or noisy. And not sure how many of you can hear the background noise here. We had some challenges with the audio yeah. to get it working well, but it's part of the excitement really here. Absolutely. Are you looking, is there anything beyond, obviously, and Dr. Ulrich just touched on this tomorrow, you're part of our keynote uh, titled The Five Most Dangerous New Attack yeah. Techniques. Yeah. That's going to happen tomorrow at 3.55 p.m. in Moscone West, level one. Make sure that you're checking out that keynote. You don't want to miss it. You want to give up. And I know you, you're going to tell me no. Is there anything you want to give up about what we might expect well, to hear? If you've heard me sort of talk in the past, sort of what I always try to do is look a little bit in the future, but also uh, try to look at threats that are already emerging and are already there. And I'll talk about a group that is close to my heart, and that's developers uh, who um, really are producing a lot of the great stuff we're seeing here. So um, that'll be a little bit of focus of at least my part of the keynote tomorrow. So I want to shift gears. I, want, I would love for you, to, for, for you to tell us a little bit about the SANS.ED research journal. What is it and you know, who is it for? Yeah, so... For science.edu, I'm the dean of research, so I'm basically organizing a lot of the work we're doing with graduate students uh, to produce great research. And one of our focus areas here when we are looking at good research is to do things that are actually applicable, things that uh, you can use and that will help you do a better job. The, the way we work is, of course, it's a college. So as in any college, things get graded. And if you're graded an A in your research paper, the distinction you'll receive is that we'll publish your research. Mm. It is published on the SANS.edu website, but every year we sort of combine basically the best of these papers into our research journal. And you can download it. It's downloadable as a PDF. Uh, so... Uh, great stuff in there. It's categorized by the different sort of curriculums that we cover, you know, defensive, offensive, forensics, all of the good things, the management papers as well, I believe. And uh, it's really meant for you to really have this resource available to then, you know, draw from as you're trying to solve some of these problems in your own organization. What kind of research can be found there? Well, uh, it's, for example, uh, one paper that I liked a lot supervising it so maybe i'm a little bit partial here uh, <laughs> but uh, it's about uh, some of uh, these resume scams uh, and what basically happens here is that uh, other companies are putting out job ads on your behalf so you may see a job ad out there that claims to be from your company but it isn't wow and then they're tricking applicants into applying for this they're stealing their information as part of it but there's someone's also just simply stealing money by basically asking them to sort of advance some of the costs, like for laptops and things like this. So uh, this particular student, what she did was to look at how do you defend against a scam like this as a company being impersonated? How do you automate some of uh, the defensive techniques here? So I, I personally like this paper, but you find a lot of papers like this that are 
current relevant problems and how you can solve them. So you know, just copy the approach that some of these papers use to solve these problems. Mm. So I'm going to invite uh, everyone watching to take part in a, a quick poll that we created here. Um, feel free to hop over to slido.com and you can type in the code that's showing up on the screen right now, or you can just scan that QR code and it'll bring you right into this question. But a research journal categorizes papers into the following topics. Which section is most interesting to you? Uh, let us know your thoughts on this poll. Um, Dr. Ulrich, why is, while, while people are engaging in the poll, I wanted to ask, you know, why is the sans.edu research journal a valuable resource for students and practitioners alike? I think what distinguishes it from some of the other research and such it may see from other you know, higher ed uh, institutions is that it's very applicable. Uh, mm. I see, as for example, you have uh, defensive. There was like a great paper about, you know, on, on Mac, like you're using a Mac here. Yeah. When you install some software that's not signed, uh -huh. you have the ability to override this. How can you figure out in your network if users are overriding this, if users are installing software mm. that they're not supposed to install? So, so all of these sort of relevant hands on problems, because that's how Macs are usually infected, is by people downloading that fake Adobe Flash update or whatever. Right. And uh, so. Again, that's sort of one of those things that you can see in the in the research journal. We're getting some responses. Defensive is is getting a, 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 yep, a couple. Yeah, yep. I, uh, I hope defense is going a little bit higher because forensics, that's what you do if you suck at defensive. Kind right, of, yeah? right. So if, if you do a defensive right, you don't really need the forensic stuff. But uh, yeah, ICS, we also had some nice ICS papers there. I believe some of it, some segmentation ideas with network access control, ICS networks. So, um, uh, again, very hands-on, how to do things. But then, because it's grad level research, it's not just how to do it. It's also proving that whatever is proposed to works. Uh, you find a lot of you know, blog posts that will tell you how to do X, but do they actually tell you that the technique that they're proposing works? Ah. That's part of this here, you know, where uh, we actually prove that. Wow. So let's shift gears and talk about Internet Storm Center. You know, you're, you're in addition to your role uh, as Dean of Research for SANS.edu, you founded the Internet Storm Center. Tell us a little bit about that history you know, and, the, and the mission. You shared that with me, and I, I find it so amazing. But, yeah. you know, tell, share, share that with our, our viewers. Well, there are really two parts that sort of make Internet Storm Center work. Uh, one is sort of that human part where people are sending us information in. Uh, I think Lance Spitzenhoff calls it like the human sensor, kind right. of. And then you also have some of these technical sensors, honeypots. It started all back actually in 1999. Yes. That's when it started. Uh, back then, SANS called it incidents.org. And it was meant to sort of help people share information about, remember Y2K? Yes. When that yes. sort of was, was all going on. Uh, so uh, that sort of was the initial idea behind it. But what people really found helpful is that information sharing part. Uh, we can really learn all from each other. And you hear the motto of RSA this year is better together, kind of. And yes. really, uh, stronger together. Strong, stronger together. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, sorry, that's the uh, motto here this year. And that's really what this is all about. You know, by sharing information, making it easy to share that information. Uh, that's um, uh, that's really what Internet Storm Center is all about. And so just a little bit of history also that daily posts that you see, uh, we call them diaries. And there are two reasons behind that. Uh, one, it is sort of just a small thing usually that whoever wrote it up, uh, it helped them today, it helped them this week. I today wrote something up on how to use chat GPT to calculate CDSS scores, for example. That's something that I found helpful uh, earlier this week when I was working on a little problem. But we also called it diary because back uh, when we started, blogs the term didn't exist yet so. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> that's awesome so we're throwing up another poll on the screen we invite you to take part in right now again feel free to scan the qr code or hop over to slido.com if you'd like to engage but which feature of the internet storm center website do you find most useful let us know uh your thoughts there um dr Ulrich, why do you think the uh, I, I and I, I have the habit of wanting to say ICS 
Oh. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I'll punch you. <laughs> continues to be. Why, why do you think ISC continues to be so heavily trafficked after all these years? I think it's staying relevant and current. That's really what it is about. Yes. Maybe, um, the site may not look very fancy, but uh, it's, it's content valuable. is what matters. Yes. It's the content that matters. Uh, they are very vendor neutral. Hardly see even a Sans ad on the site. Yeah. They added some for Sans Fire, by the way, which invented that you never should attend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, in the, for example, the daily podcasts and such, it's the one thing I just saw pop up here on the screen. Yes. Uh, I always get these emails. I'm not sure if you get these emails from like marketing people suggesting guests for your podcast. Yeah. And I have to Every point day. them out. You obviously <laughs> didn't listen to the podcast because I don't have guests. <laughs> That's the classic <laughs> with solicitation. I get the same thing yeah, every, yeah, uh, every day. Uh, so I usually forward those to whoever guests they advertise, kind of. But listen, you, you've done a. I, I'm a podcaster. You yeah. know, they're they're as a, as a podcaster. Um, I have so much tremendous and profound respect for you having been able to to do a daily show for 14 years. Oh, yeah, oh. it's about 14 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and I mean. Thousands of episodes later. Yeah. Well, it's keep it simple. Uh, that's really it. Uh, I don't have sort of a lot of fancy equipment, but over the years, kind of, I improved my equipment a little bit. Uh, yeah. Uh, you may notice that having a fancy microphone makes you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> may not make the sound better, but. But <laughs> whatever the equipment, you, to your point, you've yeah. been providing relevant, yeah. valuable content yeah. in, you know, the, the, that's succinct. It's quick. It's supposed to basis. make you sound smarter when you come in to work in the morning. Uh, that's of the motto behind it. Yeah. Um, it's these five minutes should fit within pretty much any commute, even these days if it's just from the bedroom down to the office, kind of. Yeah. Uh, and gets you ready for the day, kind of. That's really what what the podcast is supposed to do. So let's let's talk about the, the diary. What kind of content can visitors find in the, the ISC diary? Yeah, so what I said is that it's basically these people we have to write, and we call them handlers. Uh, you know, some are handlers. These are volunteers. They have a fairly diverse set of these volunteers. They're you know, globally. We recruit them, essentially. Uh, they write about things that they find interesting. You know, by having them in different industries with different specialties, uh, you'll find sort of a fairly rich set of problems that they face in their day-to-day -day work. Like, you know, famously, we have Didier, who authored a lot of the malware analysis tools for Office documents. He's writing about some of the tools that he just improved. Uh, he's talking about some malware that he ran into where one of his tools maybe didn't quite do the trick. So, well, he improved it. And he's talking about how you can analyze the same malware yourself and using that improved tool. Mm. Uh, we had, like, um, this weekend, I think it was, uh, Manuel, he lives in Colombia and uh, he used to work for a utility. I think now he works for a bank currently, mm. but they had some issues there with like DMARC, like email security. So he did a little survey of that uh, within Colombia, kind of what he's seeing there. Uh, so that's um, the, the breadth we have. I mentioned earlier, and I did something random about chat. I do a lot of development still for Storm Center and such. So it was a problem I ran into here because. We produce sort of these summaries you may have seen whenever Apple releases updates. And the challenge with Apple updates is that they're fairly terse. Like, we do them for Microsoft too, but for Microsoft, provides a lot of information, like CVS scores. So um, today I was just talking about, well, you know, can you use ChatGPT to calculate a CVS score for you? And it actually worked pretty well. Wow. Uh, and what prompts to use for that? So really just... You know, it sounds a little bit random, but I think because these are real problems that all of us face at work, I think that makes it sort of relevant for us. Plus, of course, that we have all the, the data we get from our sensors to draw from. I, I'm seeing a, a, a LinkedIn user sharing that. They just checked out. I, <laughs> said, ISC. ISC. Storm Center. And they bookmarked <laughs> it. Yes. Um, listen, you know, uh, I, if, if you're tuning in, to the broadcast right now, feel free to drop your questions in the chat um, if there's anything that you'd like to ask Dr. Ulrich. Um, I, before I jump to this next question, I had the, the, the privilege of attending the commencement for this year's class um, of the college. And 
it was amazing. Um, you know, I, I'd love to ask from, from your perspective uh, as the Dean of Research for the college, um, you know, what do you see as some of the true benefits to or SANS Technology Institute over someone pursuing a degree in, a, in another institution? Well, I think uh, the big benefit is that it is rooted in actually applying what you learn. Like uh, the SANS promise that anything you learn, you can, you can, apply, the uh, next you can apply the next day or when you get back home to yeah. work. Uh, that's true for the college as well. You get the certifications, not just the degree. And you know, here, of course, at RSA, GIAC just announced how they're revamping some, some yes. exciting stuff going on there uh, that uh, also affects our grads. Because some people always ask me, should I get a certification or should I get a degree? Well, get both. Get both. That's really what, um, what SANS does. We have an amazing student community in part because they all have jobs. That's uh, also special about us. For example, did you know that uh, just last week, the National Cyber League, which is a yes. competition with like, I think a couple thousand schools, we rank again, not just the first time, again, number one uh, yes. with our advanced team. And I think 30% of the top team, top 10 teams were science.edu teams. That's so, fantastic. Um, we have amazing students. And one I think, of whom I'm talking with this Thursday, I'm having oh, yeah. a conversation with Melissa Bishoping. Oh, Melissa Bishop, she's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and some of them we actually also see like as SANS instructors now, sort of moving up, so sort of, to the other side of the fence yes. as they're graduating. That's uh, fantastic. So that's an, no, it's it's just an amazing group of people. It's an amazing group of people for to be connected to if you're a part of uh, that uh, that student body, the alumni groups and such. Absolutely. So one last question for you. How can threat researchers and other security professionals get involved in the Internet Storm Center? So the easiest and most fun way to get involved in is set up one of our honeypots. It runs in the virtual machine, which we sort of build around Raspberry Pis, which are sadly a little bit hard to get these days. But uh, that's why we sort of also support virtual machines and see what's hitting it. Actually, as part of our undergraduate program, we now have an internship where students are you know, setting this up and are writing up some of the attacks they're seeing. Yes, you know, a, a lot of it, at least to me, kind of is old stuff. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> hey, you know, to some of them, that's new, that's exciting. And uh, they do sometimes find something real exciting things that we then know, again, publish on the Internet Storm Center. And I think in the just InfoSec podcast that you're yes, running. We'll we have, have actually two of them coming. I, I do. I linked up two of them. So, so Dr. Uh, Ulrich yeah. is hinting to he'll be hosting an episode of Wait Just an InfoSec uh, a week from Tuesday on May 9th. So you definitely yeah. want to mark your calendar and come yeah. check out Wait Just an InfoSec on Tuesday, May 9th uh, at 10 a.m. Eastern. 10 a.m. Eastern. So I better put it in my calendar so I show up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Ulrich, thank you so much. Oh, is, is there anything else you want to share before we wrap? No, just, uh, you know, participate. Participate in the community, whether it's within the Storm Center. If you see something interesting, send us in. We love it if you email us malware. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, or you can upload them via our website. Uh, browse around and, you know, participating is also tell me about bugs. Tell me about things we should improve. Uh, that's also part of the participation here. Yes. Thank you so much. 